Hello there, everybody, and welcome to the wild, weird, and wacky world of the word. And it's also a wonderful world as well. One of the wonderful things about that word is found in the Older Testament in the book of Esther. That's something that our kids in Bible school this past week looked at. And how Esther was chosen for a very special purpose. And that is to be part of the salvation history of the of the Jewish people. Yeah. Without Esther, there wouldn't have been any Jews because, well, the story takes place in the Persian Empire in the uh, 5th century, or is it the 6th? Yeah, 5th, 6th century BC. And Haman, who was just an evil person within the empire, had convinced the king to sign an edict to destroy these certain peoples who were causing troubles. He didn't tell the king that these people were the Jewish people. Well, it just so happened that one of the right-hand men of the king happened to be a Jew named Mordecai. So Mordecai had told the queen, and this is Esther, and she became queen. Eh, we'll talk about that someday, how she became queen. But she was queen, and he convinced her to tell the king and ask the king basically for mercy to stop this plot that was being uh, hatched by Haman. And to make a long story short, Haman was caught and he was hung on the, own, the gallows that he himself had built for the Jews. The Jewish people were allowed to take up arms and they defeated anyone who tried to do them in. And it's a story of salvation, you know, being saved as, as God's people once again. And who was the one who really precipitated all this? It was Esther. Now, here's the interesting thing about the book of Esther. Nowhere does it mention God in it. Nowhere is there a prayer. Now, there's a mention of a prayer in there, but there's actually there's no prayer whatsoever. So, Esther had a very difficult time making its way into the canon of Scripture. But it eventually did, and it was the uh, basis for the Hebrew celebration of Purim. Yeah, look that up sometime. It's kind of an interesting story. And the fact that Esther, the book of Esther, was so hard to get into the Hebrew Scriptures is evidenced by the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls tank, take, um, contain fragments of every single book of the Old Testament except Esther. <laughs> They just didn't want anything to do with it. Well, here is the wild, weird, and wacky part of it all. When the book of Esther was translated from the Hebrew into Greek, there's something called additions that were made to the book of Esther. And there were six different additions. They were kind of scattered through the book. And they mentioned God, God's hand in all of this. And at the very end, Mordecai himself uh, praises God for saving the people, gives God the credit. Now, in the original book of Esther, it's Mordecai who is praised for saving his people. And in this edition, Mordecai does the praising of God. The other thing that's interesting about this is... In those books, and those Bibles, rather, that are here to that contain the Apocrypha, all these additions are gathered into one place, and it's called the Additions to Esther. And again, all these are, are full of prayers, they're full of prophecies, they're, they're filled with God talk all the way through, whereas the original book of Esther has none of that. Just something to kind of pique your interest. If you're able to get a hold of a Bible that has the Apocrypha in it, go to the additions to Esther and read it. It's fascinating reading. And it's good reading, too, because it does give credit where credit is due. 
God's blessings be with you as you continue your journey through the scriptures and you come up with some rather wild, weird, and wacky stuff. Blessings be with you.